Hello everybody and welcome to episode 5 of TWET. This is actually I think take 3, so we will uh <laughs> we'll get somewhere eventually. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh... <laughs> this episode alone has given us enough content for a blooper reel one day. Yes, which I I'm going to look forward to doing that. But of course I am joined here by Leechy and by Rooster. You guys are back once again for episode 5. I can't believe we're 5 episodes in. I know. It's um it's a little bit crazy. I think I w- I thought I may have been getting, you know, bored by a couple of episodes in before we started doing this, but I've had so much fun doing it and it feels so weird to know that we started this middle of December and what? now yeah, and now <laughs> we're at the end of January pretty much and Oh shit, what up? There you go. So um and this one's going to be quite uh an interesting one. We're going to be talking a lot about gaming but not necessarily games that we've played. Well, games that I've more or less played, but what's been going on? Real. Yeah, what's been going on in the news around gaming and all that kind of information? Some stuff you've probably heard of, some stuff you haven't. I know Roost is looking forward to chewing everybody's <laughs> ear off. Oh, so. rant the rant segment coming in. Yes. Forewarned. But just <laughs> he's already because we got a group chat going where we put ideas forward and like what we what we think we should talk about and Rooster went full like rage <laughs> mode earlier today. I was at work, my phone was just buzzing constantly in my pocket in a really important meeting. And, <laughs> yeah, all, all Rooster's fault. No regrets. <laughs> but it's we... all fun and games till the phone tickles your balls just in the right way. And that's exactly the reason why it's taken us three attempts to start this today. <laughs> because <laughs> Leechy has been taking something. I don't know what he's been taking, but I want some. Anyway. <laughs> Just friendly reminder, don't do drugs, kids. Red Bull's where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to move on so quickly. Um, so I wanted to start off by talking about what was quite a big piece within the gaming no. world wow okay <laughs> within the gaming world and that was cyberpunk 2077 correct yep yep thank you um one cyberpunk has been delayed for later on in the year now and i yes. really wanted to get your thoughts on on that as i i know rooster you're a big fan of cd project reds um yep. especially the, along the lines of the witcher 3 which we've mentioned plenty of times before. Leechy, you thought the game was all right. Um, <coughs> it's so, all right, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it will do. Uh, so I really wanted to right. get your guys' thoughts on this, because I know that we've spoken briefly about Cyberpunk before. Yeah. But, um, um, we haven't gone into too much detail. So one thing I, I, I tend to find about delays is they're good, simply put. Um, I much rather a game be delayed and come out um, a better quality uh, than if it was forced to release some of the worst game releases in gaming history have stemmed from uh, publishing studios um, who have sort of pushed for a release when a game wasn't ready. Uh, The only problem with delays is if the project is then still a, a failure because people tend not to have any leniency or acceptance if a game has been delayed, particularly if it was delayed several times, and then releases and is still not up to standard or up to par, then that can be really dangerous for a company because people are not happy they had to wait longer for still a broken product. So um, they have the potential to be good. Um, And the, the problem is, is, we don't work there. We're, we're we're not in the know. We don't know what state the game is in. We don't know what issues have arisen. For all we know, they could have felt like the game was getting close. Um, they could have been going into uh, QA testing and stuff like that, and maybe someone found this just hideously large issue that needed to be fixed, and they realized that it's something that got overlooked, and it was drastic. It needed to be sorted, in which case, if it's going to take a lot, lot of time, is it, it, could, it could be an engine issue. Um, a lot of the time, that, that's where the problem can stem. If you've built your game over the past several years around this engine, and then something comes to light, and you realize that it's a limitation of the engine, 
and you realize, shit, well, you, you I mean... can't fix it um, without fixing the engine. That is a daunting task. And so in that situation, the only option is to delay a game. So I have look high at, hopes. Look at, look at DayZ. Exactly. The difference of DayZ when they switched engines um, is drastic. But I have high hopes for CD Projekt Red to yeah. deliver on Cyberpunk 2077, uh, oh, while definitely. sort of not expecting it to at the same time. Like I, I have high hopes. I want it to be good, but I'm not just going to assume that it's going to be because The Witcher 3 was good. Yeah, The Witcher yeah, 3 is a fantastic game, but... Your best bet, really, especially with any new IP, is to kind of try and go into it with just mild expectations that makes sense a, a bit of, yeah a, a bit of skepticism optimism along along with it maybe but you can't just assume something's going to be good because of the studio behind it especially if it's a new ip mm. yeah oh yeah i get well even even if it's not a new ip even if the game itself is derived yeah. off of you know other media or very comparable to other pieces of um you know gaming and so on like we'll get to that later on as well <laughs> i'm get i'm talking about dragon ball z kakarot here but we'll get to that that's another yeah. piece um with cyberpunk i i don't know if it's because i'm deliberately avoiding the hype train and i'm not really you know focusing on what's happening with its development or anything like that but i haven't actually seen any gameplay and i'm not sure if others have uh there have been two gameplay um i i think two uh gameplay reveals um where they broke down gameplay and they, they showed some uh they sh showed very minimal segments yeah and the two that they showed seemed uh a fair bit different from each other so uh they did state on the first one that this was a early very early build of the game yeah. things could easily change and it became apparent when we saw the second sort of batch of gameplay and we realized quite a bit had changed in that time um but it's We've seen enough to kind of get a feel for the the theme, but not necessarily enough that we could confidently say this is what the game is going to be like because of how much has changed between the two. We have no idea how much has changed again since. Yeah. Hello, guys? Yeah. Yeah, what, what happened then? I don't know. Something just cut off. Yeah, uh, what's that? That was strange. Uh, anyway, we're, anyway, we're back now. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Uh, lovely intermission. Perfect time to put the adverts. <laughs> uh, sorry, you were saying that um, about them and their development cycle. I mean, yeah. yeah well, um, yeah, go, go on. on. I was I was gonna say, you know, because like I said, I'm not somebody who's been following the development consistently <clears throat> and and like loads because Cyberpunk's not really been on my radar. Until yeah. the last couple of, I would say, weeks, maybe two months. Um, I knew it was a thing when it was, you know, originally announced and there was information about it. But it's not something that I've been really, really looking forward to. And But I know a lot of people within the gaming community are looking forward to it because of CD Projekt Red, because of The Witcher. Yes. But I, I, I'm, not, I'm not on the hype train. I, Just like we said in a previous episode, the game has the potential to be incredible genre defining you know it's and it's yes. being completed by a studio that we know will work very hard to give us a fantastic experience does that mean we're going to get one no it yeah doesn't. exactly yeah um just as you said just because the studio it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to always create the best games in the world um so you know i think the community definitely needs to get on board with that but I, i'm with you a delay for a game like this is not a problem at all it it shows that the studio really cares about you know how the quality they're to, they push out yeah they're marketing it and they they've marketed it to a point where they know it needs to be good and they need to get it to a good place before they release it and yes. that, that i'm all about that that is absolutely fine by me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like choosing to release a broken ass game just because it's deadline time as opposed to just delaying it yeah. um, is just totally inexcusable. 
Um, I saw something recently. I can't remember the source, unfortunately. Um, but it was about Battlefield Five, and with the game being, um, or with EA being publicly traded or whatever, um, apparently Battlefield Five being delayed longer than the month that it was would have basically massively hurt its trade value. Um, and as such, they pushed the game in the state that it was. Uh, but then uh, it, that immediately got me thinking, because it was around the same time that I found out that Cyberpunk had been delayed by not even just one month, like months, you know, almost the entirety of the damn year. Um, and I'm just like, if, if CD Projekt Red can do it, EA can fucking do it. It's, yeah. it's yeah. inexcusable. I, I, to I choose difference... to release your game in a broken ass state just because oh it's deadline time. I think where it it's stems from is publishing studios and um, and money. Simply put, because uh, what a lot of people don't realise is until recently, um, even during their development of Witcher Three, um, CD Projekt Red was still technically regarded as an indie studio. They were an independent studio. Um, and so their outlook is not a, a, on like the development and stuff like that isn't as sort of um, influenced by the suits upstairs, basically, who aren't the developers who are there for, I need this product to go out um, so that, if, you know, for these reasons. Um, they're a studio that is a lot more controlled by its development team, so to speak. And so there's a lot more passion on outputting a high quality product. And fortunately with a lot of AAA studios, it's, it's kind of like the AAA studio curse, is you may be a, a developer of a game who has the utmost of passion for your product. Um, you might want to put out the best quality you can, but you have bosses. You have bosses who tell you what to do. If you don't do what your boss yeah. tells you, you lose your job. So you may not wish to push a title, but if the people above you tell you you have to, then you have to. Problem yeah. is, the people making those decisions usually aren't in the situation to know the situ the state of the game, and that's where companies like CD Projekt Red, uh, you know, have have the advantage there. Obviously, since The Witcher Three uh, being so successful. Um, someone correct me if i'm wrong if, if they know uh the the difference in in the comments but i believe they would now technically be classified as a triple a studio because of how much money uh the company is worth um so their net value has drastically increased because of the witcher 3 so i, I think they would now technically be classified as triple a but it's still the same people who very re up until very recently weren't a triple a studio it's uh it's why it's why um <laughs> indie games uh, end up being so popular among the gaming community because they're built with passion and care. They may not be the most technically impressive games. They're probably not going to be the most super advanced graphical games. A lot of the time they tend to have some kind of art style that isn't technically impressive, but very pleasant to look at. So it's good enough. People are happy with it. But you tend to find that Although the games are a lot smaller, for obvious reasons, much smaller studio, a lot of the time, maybe even one to five people. But the care and attention that those one to five people put into the final product before they are willing to release it ends up becoming a, just a beautiful game that so many people love without as many issues. And so that's sort of yeah, just yeah, how I the gaming industry to, goes. Uh, I keep meaning to give Disco Elysium a try, actually. Like, it's a pretty notable indie game at the minute, I think. Yeah. It's apparently meant to be like astounding. The narrative I've heard is supposed to be on another level, but I don't know. I, yeah. I, I have this weird thing that I just I generally don't play indie games as, as much as that. Sucks for the devs, I guess. <laughs> but I don't even have time to play AAA games, let alone indie games. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. exactly. I've still not completed The Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> like, still, I mean, I, I never have. I, I, I want to so much, but I just, I just can't because I've got no time. He says, <laughs> sitting here talking for an hour every week. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but <laughs> but yes, back to the original point. So Cyberpunk, do we think it's going to be a good game? Personally, I think it will be, but we have to really wait until we get our hands on it because it yeah it has the potential I, to be amazing. I, I do think yeah, I do think it really has the potential there, especially you know a good couple of extra months. Because when was it due? Like March, I think. So April. You know, we've it gone was from early April. Ah, so you know we've gone from like what three months? Yeah, uh, just barely three months away, and now it's coming the ass end of the year. So yeah, but... my my brother's not happy though. Like my brother is super hyped for it, and uh, he keeps getting absolutely done over because uh, I think Doom got delayed, then Cyberpunk was delayed, now it's been delayed again. Um, so yeah, <laughs> everything he's interested in keeps getting delayed. Well, it's, look, at the end of the day, if it becomes a better game due to it, good. I, I would much rather have a, a lack of a bug fest, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> but like I said, only time will tell. So um, I'm going to move on. And the next point I'm going to talk about is Elder Scrolls Online Greymore. The trailer recently uh, came out yes. for that. Now, the uh, three of us... beautiful. The three of us have played a lot of Elder Scrolls Online mm. together. Um, you know, this is going back probably about a year or so now, but we've definitely yeah, probably played... probably more than that. Probably a lot more than that, actually. But we definitely played quite a bit together. And yep. um, I like how within... With the last... Oh, excuse me. With the last kind of downloadable content that they did... You know, they introduced dragons and now they're introducing vampire lords. You know, it, yeah. they're, they're kind of regurgitating what Skyrim did, more or less, within its DLC packs. But those kind of things, you know, the dragons in Skyrim, the vampire lords within that DLC pack, the first DLC pack, you know, they, they were things that made Skyrim better and made the Elder Scrolls better. So I understand the kind of route that they're taking. The fact that it's set in Skyrim as well is going to be interesting. There's some characters um, that are brought back into the story. So, um, so what, I liked, what I liked um, about the trailer is I feel like a lot of games uh, these days are starting to take this approach. But I'm, I'm liking the sort of the darker themes yeah. the games of recent are starting to take. Um, a good example again is Diablo, uh, Diablo Four. That trailer has very obviously shown us that Diablo is going darker, darker toned again, um, back to what uh, Diablo Two was like. People are happy about that. They like the darker themes, and I feel like that's the energy I got from the Greymoor, uh trailer. Is something that Skyrim never quite portrayed in the Elder Scrolls uh, Skyrim. Is the fact that it is a harsh land. Yeah. It's very hard. It's very hard to live there. It, it, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's snow and death. <laughs> <laughs> I think we found the title of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, no, Skyrim is this harsh, harsh land. And in some aspects here and there, I feel like the the other scrolls uh, five portrayed that. But as a whole. Not so much, and I feel like this Greymore trailer really helped to portray the more darker aspects of what Skyrim is like, uh, while bringing in, you know, obvious fan f favorites of almost any series, vampires. Yeah. Um, in quite in quite an interesting manner as well. You know, you've got the the vampires and the, the thralls with at attacking, and they seem like quite scary, formidable foes. Um, in the trailer, they really give off this sort of powerful persona about them and then the one that escapes when it goes uh, back into the like the castle the, the fortress goes down underground and then you see the shadow and, and, and you see the eyes and they've really portrayed this like they've tried to go back to vampires are scary not fun not sparkly yeah <laughs> yeah sparkly. exactly um <laughs> and, and and they've they've tried to portray this of this is not gonna be uh, easy um now obviously you know gameplay wise there are people out there who will probably stomp it straight away and and just you know their builds are really powerful but in a lore sense they've really given this feeling of this is formidable skyrim is in danger if these are trying to uprise um 
and this is a scary time. And I, I like that. I like the sort of the darker undertones. And I feel like we can see um, a more law friendly side of Skyrim. Yeah. From the Elder Scrolls Five Skyrim. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just watch. If no one's watched the trailer, uh, please go and watch the trailer. It's fantastic. I'll put a link. Down I did in the watch it, but I'm gonna have to refresh myself on it actually. Uh, it's it's <laughs> really really good. It, you do kind of get that sense of like fear. Like you're you're yes. in you're in that location at that time because they're, they're in this like they're in a town or like a little village. Um, they're surrounded by the they're in this big circle. There's loads of fire around them, but the fire keeps going out and they keep getting killed off one by one by this yeah, shadow being picked off. And you just have no idea what it is or what's going on. It's it is really really well done. The score as well is fantastic. It feels like yes. you're watching a horror film. Um, it does. And they they. I completely agree with you, Roos. They really, really caught the kind of uh, the dark tones and dark elements of of Skyrim and you know vampires as these hell creatures. And it's it's fantastic and it's really good. Of course, it's not going to be portrayed that way in the game because the game's an MMO. You know that game has yes. fantastic cinematics, but um, it it looks like it's going to bring some really interesting gameplay into the world of Elder Scrolls Online and. It, I think it's nice for the community, especially, to have these extra areas that they can go. And, you know, will that bring in, like it did with Skyrim, where you can be a vampire lord? It's that, Yeah, that's what I was thinking. The Well, because you, you can already be um, a vampire. vampire in the game. So yes. it might be interesting if they try to expand upon that in this expansion. Just, um, just like they did with Skyrim. Yes, and and, and see if they try and take that further and if they do i wonder if they'll try and expand upon um the, the lycanthropy in the game as well because you know at the moment you can be a vampire or or a werewolf um so if they expand one they surely should expand the other um that's if they choose to expand those mechanics or if this this is purely story based yeah. and there won't really be any changes to gameplay so much other than maybe a couple of new abilities that anyone can use, such as they did with, um, oh, what was the time-based one? And people had the, uh, you, you got a new skill bar um, that people could use, and you could like turn back time and a lot of time-based uh, skills. It came with one of the previous slightly smaller expansions. I can't for the life of me remember the name now, and it's really bothering me. But I can't remember either. But uh, yeah. So I, I wonder if maybe that might be the approach they they go down. Is the the only real gameplay changes are these enemy types that you can fight. Um, there's bound to be uh, new uh, dungeons, obviously. Yes. Um, which that could be really interesting. You know, dungeons ending in this big fight against a vampire lord could be a very formidable foe particularly if you're trying to fight it and it can it's and... probably going to have a lot of life steal abilities so exactly yeah. um I, I i feel like they they have the potential to be able to make one of the hardest dungeons in the game if it's something that can just you know <sighs> you know i might, I might have to get my game there. updated because <laughs> all this talk <laughs> uh, yeah i I, re I recently in, uh, made sure my game was up to date so i haven't played Elder scrolls online in quite a while yeah um, I, I finished uh, uh i think it was Bardenfell. Uh, it was yeah. technically morrowind DLC? Morrowind, um, yeah. yeah. Morrowind DLC. Uh, I'm currently in Merkmire, but I haven't really played it. I oh. wanted to do that before I bought uh, whichever game after. I can't remember. Ah, uh, yes. Elsewhere. That's the one, yeah. I've, I've not really I've, I've not really played Elder Scrolls Online for quite a well, while now. It wasn't until... Yeah, I, I haven't Morrowind, played a, an I MMO in a while. Just... No, I, I haven't unless you count Star Citizen as an MMO, which it's not at the moment but yeah, will nah, be it's not. um but i haven't really picked up an mmo since uh i was last playing wow yeah so i'm pretty much the same so i think i might when i get go back into playing an mmo i might make alter scores online the one i go back to yeah let... <coughs> oh jesus sorry guys choking on oxygen <laughs> let me know cuz um i might join you on that cuz i was thinking about going back to elder scrolls to see kind of like what state the game's in at the moment and what's been updated and you know what what's available and stuff like that i might just put like a month's subscription down to get access to the dlcs and stuff so 
Fair enough. Uh, yeah, but well, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know yet. So that's one to definitely think about. But but yeah, I think the the trailer itself is fantastic. I haven't really looked to see if there's any news on what will happen because I think the the trailer there was no announcements or anything before the trailer was released. I believe. Yeah. No. I th- I think it's it's been more of a of a teaser. You know. There's. Yeah. Um... As far as I'm aware, um, there, there might be news that I've missed, but I, I don't know of any particular news of the expansion. It's not coming out till June anyways, so we've got plenty of time to have the rundowns and the breakdowns from the developers explaining what What's we can coming. expect and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I think this was more of a, 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 th- a thematic trailer, just showing us what kind of theme we can expect for the story of this. Which, as with... Um the cinematics for that game it was fantastic really yeah. really well done uh so i'm gonna move on to my little segments some stuff that i've been playing well star citizen and, uh, <laughs> actually yes i, oh, I dear. was playing star citizen but <laughs> no i wasn't gonna mention it that much uh i've actually recently done a video on star citizen i posted it yesterday on this channel Ah yes. Uh, so if anybody's interested, go and have a look it's at that. A little self plug. You know it. Oh, well, my own channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How uh, dare you plug your own <laughs> channel on your own channel? Damn it. Ah. Anyway, so uh, I alluded to last week the fact that I was going to be getting Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, and I've got Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Um, I've also done a review of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot as well, which. I think that was pretty a pretty good video. It's currently sitting at about 250 views, and it was only I only put it out there Saturday. That's, that's it, man. You're internet famous. <laughs> <laughs> You're proud of me yet, Dad? Uh, I am. <laughs> so yeah. So what? Um, I think I'm really enjoying the game because I'm such a huge Dragon Ball fan. But you need to be a Dragon Ball fan to really appreciate the game. So, you know, from its gameplay, it's very repetitive and it's very simplistic. And, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's it's really enjoyable. But the the best way to experience the game is to just play the story. Just enjoy the story. Because there's no other modes in the game. It's, it's more or less a single player experience. But it's going across all of the main arcs of Dragon Ball Z. Not uh, with kind of like little pieces from the original Dragon Ball series. So there's a couple of characters that you can interact with from the original Dragon Ball series. And um, it's it's kind of going quite, I'm not going to say in depth, but it's going into the main story arc. So down from the Saiyan arc, the Namek arc, the uh, basically the Cell games and the Android arc and even the Boo arc, which the the main four kind of story arcs and um they they're doing it really well in terms of you know you can fly about you can do you know kind of what you want go at your own pace i think this a lot of people thought this game was going to be this massive rpg which is really focused on various rpg elements and they're going to go really deep into the lore and into the story because the entire game is completely canonical as well and when it came out I think people were expecting it to be so good and to a point that it, it didn't deliver to that hype to the community. For me, I was expecting... Basically, I got exactly what I was expecting, but a little bit more. I, I think they're, you know, they've, they've done the game really well. It's, it's a really good experience. But I think people that were expecting it to be this massive RPG where you could you know, do hundreds and hundreds of side missions and stuff like that, I think their expectations were far too high and they seem to be the people that are massively disappointed in the game's release. Um, I'm not. People reviewing it who don't like Dragon Ball obviously don't like it. I'm talking about you, IGN. No, no, don't. Useless. Useless. Anyway. Um, but people... <laughs> in case people didn't notice, we don't like IGN. Yeah. Shock. Uh <laughs> But, um, you know, people that enjoy the game, you know, they've said good things about it. I think the best place to go right now for Dragon Ball content and understanding, you know, what others think about it is probably Game Ranks at the moment. They sent, they did a before you buy with pretty much every game that's coming out. And their before you buy was actually quite well done. It was done by Jake Baldino and he, um, 
you know, he was Always really, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. I love it when he does the before before he buys, but he um he is a Dragon Ball fan as well. So hearing him talk about the Buyer's game and, how it is, <laughs> and how it currently plays out is a is very similar to how I feel about the game. I deliberately didn't watch the before you buy um, until after I did my little video on it. So so you what you watched the before you buy after you bought it? Of course. Yeah. Uh, I mean, standard how how it's yeah, done, like exactly. Um, but he he had a lot of similar views that I did on it. Um, and, you know, it goes into the fact that, yeah, it's not a perfect game. It's not the best game in the world. It wasn't going to be. It was never marketed to be. The Dragon Ball community hyped it up to at that point. And really, people who are let down by this, who are Dragon Ball fans, I think you've just let yourself down by your expectations being too high. Let yourselves fool. Yeah. <laughs> Precisely. And, you know... I know you two aren't big fans of the Dragon Ball series or any of the games, really. And the it... point is like very valid, though. Like, um, I can't think of any games off the top of my head, but I've definitely seen it happen in the past where people have expected too much from something, and then you know it's been absolutely dreadful because it didn't meet their expectations that were, you know, nowhere near what the game was supposed to be. I mean, actually yeah. thinking about it, I did it with the SO when it first came out. Like, yeah, I expected yeah. Skyrim with friends. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people had these expectations of, I can play Skyrim with friends. Um, and then when, obviously, Elder Scrolls Online was a lot more MMO than RPG, um, so to speak, a lot of people sort of dropped away from it. And I, I, it, I suppose it, it took a, a little while to recover from that. Um, and that's primarily stems from maybe a little bit of mismarketing and also misunderstanding of what the concept of the game was going to be yeah it, it can it can easily happen um to oh, games it's definitely a dangerous like, thing for games i mean at the end of the day you know us the gaming community are people that look forward to these games because they play them all the time and when you when you see something that you're really excited about, you start to build up more and more expectations in your own head of how a game is going to be and how incredible it's going to be. And, oh, it's going to be the best game in the world. And then you get it and it never meets your expectation. It never reaches that point that you've built up in your own head. And, um, you know, it, it's, it feels like a flop because of how disappointed you are as an individual. But then other people on the internet do that as well, which then yeah. kind of throw fuel on the fire of you being disappointed in that particular game and i think we need to as a community we need to move away from that and start really focusing that kind of energy towards teams like and developers like ea who are only in it for the money and who are releasing shit games because they just want the cash but I, that's, that's my my piece on it. Um, for me, Dragon Ball Z, I would give it a solid 6 out of 10. Uh, maybe maybe because I'm biased. If I'm not a DBZ fan, maybe a 4 or 5. Um, you know, it's gameplay. Fair. Isn't the best thing in the world. Like I said, it's repetitive, but it it's good fun. I mean, who doesn't it's, like yeah. just smashing it's, it's buttons? It's the theme of the game that makes it interesting more so than the gameplay absolutely so it's it's what the game is not how it plays absolutely and yeah if, if you're thinking of giving it a try and you are a dragon ball fan then absolutely if you are go for it get it because it is fantastic and great fun but if you're just looking you know to maybe try it i would not pay full price for it if you're not a dragon ball fan but you think you might want to give it a go i wouldn't necessarily say get it at full price um you could be quite disappointed if you don't understand who the characters are because the the problem with the dragon ball franchise is dragon ball z was at where it peaked where it was at its most popular but you're missing the entire dragon ball the original series which was like three four seasons and quite a fair few episodes which went into you know building the characters of goku of bulma of krillin of master roshi like those characters are well established by the time Z comes around. Z, it's more. I, I I didn't even know there was a series before Z. I thought Dragon yeah. Ball Z yeah. was it. 
No. <laughs> it went. Um, you got Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT. Um, <laughs> and then, there's always the one. Yeah. <sighs> and then Dragon Ball Super, and then there's like. There's some other spin-offs and stuff with movies in between, but Dragon Ball was um, it. It wasn't all this kind of like space. Like Goku was considered to be a human. Turns out he wasn't in Z, but you never know that. It's its own story, and it's it has the better fight scenes, and it's all you know. When power levels start to really get into an anime, that's where I think sometimes the anime becomes more popular, but then starts to kind of dip with its narrative and dragon ball was really really good it was good fun dragon ball z is a lot of the fan favorites because you know that's that's where it became very popular and it it is fantastic but dragon ball is all about the heroes and learning their kind of story and following them dragon ball z for me is the villains it's all about the villains and it's that's yeah that's kind of my take on the whole the whole game just if you're not a fan of dragon ball if, then don't get the game if you want to play the game and you're not a big fan of dragon ball wait for it to go on sale if you are a big fan of dragon ball play the game man like if you if you love dbz play the game it's so so good for <laughs> somebody like me um who is a fan but i could i could sit here and i could talk Oh, I was going to say, man. haven't you already had your video on this piece? Yes, I have. I have. It's, it's already up. Go watch it, guys. Stop know, hogging man. the airwaves, dude. Stop hogging the airwaves, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's there's one more thing that I definitely want to mention before I let you go on your rant. Because I know go you. On. I know you're itching. I'm, I'm, I'm itching. <laughs> so uh, this is not to do with gaming. This is not gaming related. Uh, so the. Tomorrow marks the 24th of January and the release of Star Trek Picard. For anybody who doesn't know me, I'm quite a big Star Trek fan. Uh, I love Star Trek. I really, really do. I think it's so well done. It's so clever. And they're very innovative on how they produce you know, their their stories and so on. And Star Trek over the years has, has come across... Is that as... the one with the Jedi? <laughs> wow, get out. <laughs> You're so triggering people. Wow. You just need a kick in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. Um, you know, it, it did things where everywhere else was afraid to go. For example, the original series was the first filmed and televised interracial kiss between a white man and a black oh, woman. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Back in the 60s, 70s. You know, it's it's always it, it's always gone out to be that kind of show that really portrays these these things it's really head ahead of its time in a lot of ways and you know a lot of people thank star trek for the creation of touchscreen technology as if it was more or less first portrayed in mainstream media on star trek the original series so you know i i think a lot of people don't think this i personally do but i feel like star trek has had such a big influence over the last 50 years on, yeah, um, on people. Never been a Star Trek fan myself, but I can agree with that. Yeah. To be fair, um, as someone who never enjoyed or watched Star Trek myself, um, I was a Star Wars fan myself. Um, but yeah, no, Star Trek clearly helped shape the industry, helped shape the future in many ways as a TV series. It was massive, simply yeah. put. Yeah, it was. It was huge, and you know, it, it still is quite big. I mean. It it did die off shortly after uh, Star Trek Enterprise, which was it was the one that was pre the original series. It was humanity's first proper mission into space and proper exploration into deep space, um, and it it was okay. I enjoyed it, but I I started watching it well after it had ended, and it just went through a lot of issues. In terms of the community, really didn't like it. They really yeah. didn't like it, and it it had a lot of issues, especially towards the end of it with its writing and it just it it tried to 
takes Trek to like dark places at points that I just don't think it was well received at that time. Now, yep. now when Star Trek Discovery came out, I'd say probably 10 to 15 years later um, on Netflix, that was so very well received. For me, that show is incredible. If, if you've never been a Trekkie, but you've always wanted to try watching some sort of Star Trek series, Star, Star Trek Discovery was fantastic. They did so, so well on the casting, the narrative, even down to just the cinematography and the effects and just everything. They did an incredible job with Discovery and they sh you know, everybody who was involved in that project should be really proud. And I think that's why people like me are so, so excited for Star Trek Picard. I mean, Next Generation, as well as the original series, are the most popular series in the Star Trek community, you know, that and Voyager as well. Um, and the fact that characters from the next gen and from Voyager are coming together for this story about Jean-Luc Picard is really exciting. Really, really exciting. It, it's t the best way to explain it to Star Wars fans is finally being able to see Obi-Wan Kenobi, Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi in the series. Uh. That, that whole, you know, bringing it back, seeing what happened next sort of piece. Of course, with Kenobi, we know what happened. Vader killed him. Spoilers. Uh, oh, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Vader, no. Uh, but we know nothing in between, you know, Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. There's nothing there. So when that comes back, Star Wars fans are going to be, you know, over the moon and really excited to see what, what happens. That's the exact same with what's going on now. Trek fans are or cannot wait to see what has happened to Picard, how he's got to his point and the story and how it's going to unfold from this point. And yeah. It's bringing characters back that, um, you know, people love. Seven of Nine from Voyager is one of the most loved characters in the Star Trek franchise. And she, she was somebody who was within, she was a human within the Borg Collective and the whole Star Trek Voyager series was about her trying to find her, her humanity again. Cause she was, she was a child when she became part of the Borg Collective. And um, she doesn't quite understand, you know, how to be like human because she's been a big robot in a hive mind for her entire life. And in the trailers, the way that she, she she's kind of as if she's evolved into that and started to learn that and correctly like understanding these human nuances and stuff. And I think that's that's the most anticipated character for me is seeing how that character has evolved to the point that she has and I I'm yeah. I'm gonna stop fangirling <laughs> because I'm so excited and that that's tomorrow. That starts tomorrow. Lauren is so excited to watch that with me. <laughs> She's really not and I don't feel sorry for her <laughs> at all. But yes, we are watching it tomorrow. Oh right, I have fangirled for the last thirty minutes. Um on everything it's just been me chatting away so it is time rooster it is time for you to go open the floodgates <laughs> so He's it's time Prepare the salt for a new segment of rooster rants salt, salt um, corner 101 <laughs> so i wanted to bring attention to uh this elder scroll 6 article um on uh tech radar because i hate it simply put <laughs> it is full it's written by three people um i don't i won't give names if people go out there and find the article i'm referring to that's on them um i will say please don't, don't please don't harass the people but i hate them um so it's just full of misunderstandings and inconsistencies and just false information and these people are writing a news segment um, that it they sh they should fact check their work. This is something that a lot of people are going to read, and if they're going to read it and believe it, they've been given false information, and I hate to see that. So I wanted to pick it apart. Uh, so the article is uh, the Elder Scrolls Six release date, news, and rumors. 
So uh, clearly these people had no new information, no news. Um, sorry, two seconds. No information. Um, no sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they've clearly had no news to talk about, but for whatever reason, they needed to write this article. Uh, so it's full of very old information, uh, missing a lot of information. Um, so some of the, the key points, um, they start by uh, talking uh, about, you know, the fact that we've got a long, long while to wait uh, for Elder Scrolls 6. Uh, they decided to talk about release date and news. Long story short, there is no release date news. Their article basically just tells you, yeah, so uh, the news about the release date is um, we, we don't have any. <laughs> then why write the article? I'm sorry, but so many people just oh, Elder Scrolls news. It's it's clickbait, absolute clickbait. Um, it, uh, I detested reading it, but I felt like I needed to read the whole thing. If I'm going to talk about it, I needed to know that I've, <laughs> I understood the whole thing. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it now because I I only read half of it when you sent it to me because it bored me. It's just it is it's literally just written. nonsense, and it's this this is just brilliant. So I, I've got down to the what features can we expect. Well, okay, let's let's see what they've come up with here. Home building. Oh, so you mean the second DLC pack from Skyrim and what was also in Fallout 4. Fantastic. And then there's there's about two paragraphs of that, followed by a whole new story. Well, I fucking hope so. <laughs> yeah, you know, shit. It, the article is full of um of that. <laughs> uh it's it's just um so one thing I really didn't like. They clearly have just missed the point of the announcement trailer. For one, they keep referring to that announcement trailer as just a logo, um, and going through the whole thing. Not once do they talk about the landscape we yeah. see. Um, they have very clearly missed the point that that landscape is where the next one will be set, or, or at least hinting towards it. Um, Todd Howard in interviews even said that to the eagle-eyed viewer, there are things to pick out. He, he, he straight up turned around and said, if you spot things in there, it's probably there on purpose. There are hints in that trailer. It's not just a logo. It is a, a, a hint, so mm. to speak. So when they start um, talking about uh, the rumors sort of out there, news and rumors, I put a big quotation mark around the news because it's only rumors. Um, it's not even rumors. From what uh, I'm yeah, reading, it's, but they start talking nothing. about where it where it would um, could be set, and the big obvious one that they so easily missed is the fact that based on that trailer, the com most common theories at the moment, and it's the big de debate in the Elder Scrolls community, is is it High Rock or Hammerfell? Because we're very confident it's one of those, if not both. Um, I think the most popular. Um, opinion at the moment is that what we're seeing in the trailer is Iliac Bay. So, you know, we kind of have a, a strong idea as to where it could be. It might not be, but based on the terrain, we can confidently say it's probably Hammerrock uh, or Highfell. Um, High Rock or Hammerfell. I just mixed those words <laughs> completely. Um <laughs> We'll ignore that. Yeah. Uh, but they've, they've completely overlooked that, in which they start saying, so here's where the previous games have been set. Um, forgetting that Elder Scrolls 2 was a very long time ago and basically covered a fraction of High Rock and Hammerfell. Uh, but they basically completely dismissed those locations because it's been in previous games. So apparently it's impossible for the, the game. It has to be in a new location. And they only talk about rumours of Black Marsh uh, elsewhere and um, Valenwood. Even the explanations of why it could be set here are completely misinformed, um, misguided opinions. Mm. Uh, they then start talking about job listings. And this one really got me. They miscited something as being the first spotting of something. So they start talking about job listings. So a lot of the Elder Scrolls sort of um, deep diggers, I suppose, uh, for information, keep up to date on job listings for Bethesda Game Studios and Zenimax Media. 
But this uh, this article mentions about the job listings for a gameplay programmer and a video editor, and it links to and cites a Reddit user who talks about it. Now, granted, this the, the Reddit post is very informative. It perfectly explains it. But they specifically state that this Reddit user discovered it and that this is the first spot in and talking about it. The Reddit post is dated four days ago. There are YouTube channels who have been talking about these job postings for over a week. So another situation of where they have not done their research, they found the first post that they that they found based an article on it and immediately cited it as the origin. That is not how an article writing goes. That is not how you cite to work. You, you need to do your, your digging. You cannot cite something as being the origin if you haven't even spent five minutes to find out if it is. Um, you know, no, no, no hate towards the Reddit post. I think it's a fantastic post, but it is not the or the origin of that discovery. That Reddit user did not make all of these discoveries. Um, so it's just misinformation there uh, again. Um, and they they start talking one thing. They they were talking about the game studios and what they're working on. And at one point in the, the article, they start talking about sort of they're not only working on their new brand IP, Starfield, um, and its continued development um, and like the pre-development of Elder Scrolls 6, but they are also working on Elder Scrolls Online, Fallout 76, Dishonored, Prey, and many other titles, which goes to show that these people haven't got a clue what they're talking about, because they clearly don't understand the difference between Bethesda Softworks, the publishing studio, and Bethesda Game Studios, the game development studio. Because Elder Scrolls Online is not made by the people who are making um, Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield. Elder Scrolls Online is made by Zenimax Media. They have a lot of um, input from the Elder Scrolls team who work with and talk to them, but they do not develop um, the game. I think it's mostly the law team that they have. Most yes, of the, the law team helps, but the development team do not work on Elder Scrolls Online. No. I, it, 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 I fact-checked everything that I looked up um, myself just to make sure that I wasn't making a mistake, and it took one Google search to confirm that for myself. I was 99.9% .9 certain already but i thought i'll google it i'll double check and immediately the first thing you see in your face is zenimax media are the ones who develop elder scrolls online fallout 76 granted yeah they they sort of work on it but it's a small team a small team of this company are working on the updates um while uh, bethesda austin uh formerly battlecry studios i believe they were under zenimax as battlecry and have recently, um, by recent, I mean 2018, been acquired into the Bethesda Game Studios brand, and they're a subsidiary studio uh, in Austin. And they helped a lot with Fallout 76 and, and stuff like that. They work on Doom as well, I think. Um, but then moving on to Dishonored and Prey. I'm sorry, but they're Arcane Studios. They're published by Bethesda, Games, uh, by Bethesda Softworks, but they have nothing to do with Bethesda Game Studios. These games are not hindering um, the development, which which this section of the article implies. This section of the article is basically trying to imply that, uh, bear in mind, it's not a full studio working on these games because they're working on all of these on the side as well. That is completely false. No, they are not, because they are separate game studios all together working on these titles. It is having zero impact on Starfield and Elder Scrolls VI. As, again, you, you Google Dishonored and you can see at a glance who is developing that game. These people, completely uneducated article. Just completely. Um, and I, I dislike the fact that it, it sends the wrong message to those who don't necessarily follow uh, gaming media, gaming trends, but might see an article, clickbaity as it is, and think, ooh, interesting. I'm, I'm interested in that that game. I'll have a quick look. And then they get all these wrong ideas and misinformation, as we've talked about in the past, is a dangerous thing for games. If you th think one thing and it's false, it can completely change your outlook on it. So articles like this do nothing but hurt the gaming industry because they spread complete misinformation. It's just, it's an absolutely 
terrible article like like you were saying then as well with the uh the features and and they they they're talking about things and you know it valid topic you know home building it more than likely is going to be in Elder Scrolls. It, it was DLC for Skyrim. It came in as like a primary yet maybe unfinished feature for Fallout 4. And Elder Scrolls Online has had the Homestead DLC. So very likely we will see we will see it expanded in Elder Scrolls 6. But just the the way they describe it is just terrible. It is so badly written. Um, and in a few a few situations they bring up interviews where they they you know they they caption phrases from people like Todd Howard but then seem to have completely missed out some of the other biggest interviews that were done um at one point they talk about multiplayer um and how uh, they're confident that there probably won't be multiplayer um and it probably won't be a VR title but they can't really rule out it not being a VR title um and seeing as we've got Elder Scrolls Online, it's unlikely um, Elder Scrolls 6 will be multiplayer. Well, if they're going to quote certain interviews, how about quoting the interview straight after the um, the trailer dropped, where they explicitly stated it is not going to be a multiplayer title. Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6, quoted here, will be exactly what you expect from a Bethesda single-player RPG. I mean, I don't think you can be any more to the point uh, unless you literally grab the camera and scream into it. It's not going to be multiplayer. Yet you've got articles like this still kind of, even when they're trying to say that they don't think it's going to be multiplayer, they're completely overlooking this part where it's been stated that it won't be. Hard stated that it won't be. Um, And just, yeah, it's just... I I hate to see articles like this that are written by people who have not spent even five minutes to fact check their own work, and it's a very long article. Well, not just it's a that. very long article it, that it, just spouts absolute shit and does yeah. not give any real information at all. The problem with articles like that is they, like Tech Radar itself, have such a wide audience that yes. spreading that kind of information out can be, you know. It, it can switch people in in a specific way as they will take that as you know being f- pure fact and it yes people of course a lot of people need to be reminded to not trust everything they read here or you know see on the internet he says being on the <laughs> internet um, yeah 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 do not but... trust this article but trust the sound of my voice please um, <laughs> you know it, it's they they have such a large audience that they they do need to be careful. Oh, bad, <laughs> Jesus, um, they need to be careful with stuff like that. They they really really do. I mean, us here we we don't have a large audience at the moment, but we're I'm, you know we're focused on we're, we're gamers just like anybody else watching this video. You know we want to know what you want to know, and having this kind of crap being you know put out there to such a large audience base it's just it's not going to be helpful for the development as we've seen in so many games over the last decade of you know these kind of articles completely pushing its agenda just to get a story out and then the game tanking because people weren't expecting exactly what it was i mean anybody who reads that now if base building or home building isn't a thing in Elder Scrolls 6, it was like, somebody's going to moan and say, oh, why did you take it out? Well, actually, it was never in the development cycle. It was just yeah, talked it, about. It may, it may never have been intended. They may yeah. have decided after Fallout 4 that it was not a feature that people liked and thus decided to scrap it. But you've and got articles go. like this that are, bas- are basically turned around and said, it will be in the game because it was in the previous ones. Yeah. Um, similar thing with what I was saying about the setting. Um, so I I found the actual section here, and it says previous games have taken us to Hyrock, Hammerfell, Morrowind, Cyrodiil, and Skyrim, uh, leaving Valenwood, elsewhere, and Blackmarsh as the biggest places left to explore. And they then go on to explain why are the rumors based around those three locations, while basically saying it's not going to be any of the previous ones because we've been there. But 
if if they were actually knowledgeable of the current theories and rumors uh, that they're claiming to be talking about, they'd know that the big theories at the moment is that it is Hammerfell or High Rock, and the the community is heavily split between the two. It's, you know, some some say Hammerfell, some say High Rock, but they are the two that are believed at the moment. That's not necessarily to say that it definitely is going to be them, but they've just completely overlooked the biggest theory slash rumor of its location because they clearly haven't done their research. Yeah. I mean, even, Be- even when it first came out back in 2018, you and I were talking about it for quite yeah. a long time about, you know, what's behind it, how excited we were and kind of what kind of information that we were trying to get out of just that small little teaser because it does show so much. Yeah. They've dubbed the logo. Because they haven't paid attention to the video itself. They've only paid attention to the logo. And and they, they haven't even tried to talk about what the logo even says. I mean, the logo is brass, the instruments, everything about it, it hints towards its setting. Um, but they've just completely overlooked it as we got a logo to tell us that it exists. Here's some rumors about why it might be Valenwood elsewhere or Black Marsh. It's, no, you, you have not done your research. But there we go. So, yeah, there's. Uh, so yeah, there's. There's my uh, my rants. Um, <laughs> Lynchy I, I, again. Don't, I, <laughs> don't harass the people who have written this article. But I just want to put it out there: of be wary of misinformation because a yeah. lot of these articles can be incredibly misinformed. So please, if you're going to read these articles, by all means, read them. Gather any information you can, but take everything stated in them with a pinch of salt. Not not taken or from from uh, Rooster's Salt Corner. Um, uh, no, yeah, no. My salt is my own. <laughs> I need this salt for future situations like this, where I read an article I hate. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Leechy, you still awake? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> still about. Any anything you want to quickly rant about? We are at an hour and two minutes. So. <laughs> no, I'm good. I've uh, I've been pretty chill the last couple of days, which makes a change. So, uh... okay. Well, that's a perfect place to end it, I think. So uh, everybody who is still here, once again, thank you so much for tuning into these podcasts, giving them a listen, and just listening to us three just talk crap. uh, Thank you for letting me scream down my mic at you guys. I feel loads better. (laughs) (laughs) I love how like the first 45 minutes was a lot of positivity and me like, yes, this game's great, but maybe if you're not, but you know what? It's still great. And I'm so excited for this. And I'm really happy that this has been delayed. And then you've come in and just gone, I hate this article. (laughs) Um, But pretty much. uh, It's all good. But yes, seriously, guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. And um, hopefully we'll see about doing one again next week. Please continue watching this space because I'm hoping to get a video out by this weekend of an event in Star Citizen. Um, so, yeah, please, you know, stay tuned here and uh, hopefully... Hit that bell icon! <laughs> Hit that bell! You know, I've lost it already. That fucked up. <laughs> but, yes, guys, please do come back. But we're ending it, so goodbye, have a great weekend, and hopefully we'll see you next week. We'll see you.